Steven, that was a nasty fuck. Oh, it wasn't even in. <laughs> the key. The fucking arm wasn't in, it was sitting. That's a loose key. I'm fucking say that. Welcome to another review from the Game Over Jack channel. This is the Balder and Broods EX version by Prime One Studios. This statue shows off one of Kratos' most intriguing and powerful foes to date. Far from the Greek gods, we have the son of Freya and Odin, the man who feels nothing, Balder. No, 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 no. I feel no pain. I feel I no pain. I feel nothing. This man is honestly one of the most outstanding characters in the God of War 2018 game. And honestly, this statue is what made me take notice of Prime 1 in the first place. When they first revealed this statue, this is what put them on the map for me. And this was the first statue I ever ordered from them. And two years later, I finally have him. But before we get started with the review, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any upcoming content. If you're looking for the unboxing and assembly of this statue, or even the Kratos statue, I've posted the links in the description. So let's get this review started. We'll start with the base this time. The majority of this base is actually built up of broken rock roots coming from underground as well as the incredible broods that are just becoming unearthed by the sheer force from his feet. Okay, so across the statue we have a lot of little patches of snow and honestly I think these could have been done a lot better because they used glitter to put these parts together. And the glitter just looks like an absolute mess when I was pulling it out of the box, the glitter was all over my gloves and these are meant to protect the statue not make it worse. Glitter scratches stuff, guys. Why are you doing this? I hate glitter. M probably more than a normal person. And you do realize that the majority of these statues are meant to be cleaned with makeup brushes, right? You know a makeup brush is just going to take glitter and just spread it everywhere. What were you thinking? Especially with it being so easy to come off on this statue. Use your brain. Just a little. But regardless of the glitter, the glistening look does still look amazing. It is just a shame that the majority of the patches came out where it just looks like glue and the glitter has just come clean off. Yeah, it looks a little bit more like frost, but that's clearly not the intended look here. Now this glitter problem is actually most noticeable on the little companion piece that comes with this statue. Now the entire back end of this statue is actually built up of roots or branches. I'm not sh entirely sure which. But these are adorned with rocks along with that glistening snow. And then we've got the, the vines wrapped around the entire back and sides of the statue. Flowing towards Baldur as he pushes off it towards his new rival. The broods are one of the most standout parts of this entire base. But Prime 1. There seems to be something missing here. When this was advertised, it was showing that this had an LED function. And your distributors are still advertising an LED function. This is not an LED. It does not have an LED! Why? You didn't cut the cost, you didn't tell the customers, and you clearly didn't even tell your distributors. That's not okay. And yes, I've seen online that you have said to other customers that this was merely an error. That wasn't an error. That was a cut. Last time we've seen cuts like that was Cyberpunk. Can't deny it, it's all true. But everybody's still- But I suppose we should discuss what we've actually got. So we can discuss them a little bit better, we'll actually start with Baldur's right hand side, this brood right here, with his outstretched arms, his golden helmet, and that ooze just dripping out of him. But it's not an LED. You can even see that ooze dripping onto the base below him, flowing into the runes on the, the rocks that surround the base. Now I did just find an issue while I was recording this video, where the key for his right arm isn't fully magnetized and tends to wobble in and out. Bit annoying. The natural tree and rock-like look that all of these broods have is absolutely perfect. Even the eye sockets using that luminescent green paint yet again just looks absolutely beautiful and really otherworldly just like it should. Now the golden helmet is done really well as well. You've got like sort of patterns down the sides of the helmet and the weathering and cracking is absolutely perfect for something that should have been in the ground. Now onto the broods on his left hand side, we have the helmetless brood which is propping itself up, trying to drag itself out the ground. That 
really otherworldly look yet again in the eyes. And without the helmet, these things just look absolutely terrifying. Really brings a new life to these foes in the game. And onto the last brood, the one with the traces, arrows shooting clean through his head. That ooze splattering out the other side. This is just an absolutely perfect depiction of these broods as, as Atreus takes them down. You can also see that this helmet, unlike the other two, the two horns have been snapped off and roots are protruding through the head. And honestly, this just adds new life to the statue, new life to that brood in particular and makes it really stand out on this base with so much jumbled extras. The broods are just fantastic. Okay, now for the main man himself. Prime 1 have done it again, bringing a perfect likeness from the game into this statue, using those perfect translucent skin tones all over this piece. The body portion of this statue is all one piece, no extra keyings needed, and they've pulled it off beautifully with no breaks whatsoever. Starting with his head sculpt, we have different shades of brown used within his hair to keep that disheveled look so it doesn't look too uniform, and each individual strand stands out on its own. If you actually look at the back of his hair towards his mullet, you can see the fine braiding funneled into the sort of metal-looking clips, which just looks absolutely fantastic. The gauntness and the expression on his face is just amazing, using that super accurate painting and sculpting. You can even see the creases in his skin, and I doubt the camera can pick this up, but you can even see slight veins throughout the skin and around his temple. I love the expression they've used for this statue as well, that pure rage and anger he's showing his opponent is on full display with his eyes focused, brow furrowed and his mouth wide open. You can actually imagine the angry roar as he's ready to attack. An amazing head sculpt overall. We can't talk about the main body of this statue without first covering these awesome tattoos. Now I have been asked if these are decals and no, these tattoos are actually painted onto the translucent skin that Prime 1 are so good at. But these tattoos are perfectly recreated from the game and are so well painted with the dark blues on the front and the blood red tattoos on the back. Now I did look up the translations of the runes and the symbols and most of them actually come down to the simple matter of Baldur being cursed, undying, unfeeling and most of all to never forget or forgive the one who cursed him. This statue has it all. As we all know Baldur is a man with no feeling. And because of that, he walks around in blizzards with no top, no shoes. And as you can imagine, the man gets frostbite. And Prime 1 have managed to depict this in this statue absolutely perfectly. This is most pronounced on his feet and honestly, it's a feature that I overlooked in the game. I didn't even think of it until I saw this statue and honestly, I love the attention to detail. Just phenomenal. Now moving on to the legs, we also have the heavily weathered and tattered trousers, which have, as always, been sculpted and textured beautifully. On the lower half of his legs, the trousers also feature red tattered wraps that go around his feet. This is probably the only protection this guy has from the elements. This guy's insane. I did it and I didn't it's the elephant. <laughs> the elephant. <laughs> the elephant. <laughs> <laughs> Further up his waist, we can see a lot more wrapping and many different materials, starting with these cool little gold medallions on his left leg. These are not made of the same material as the rest of the statue so no need to worry about them snapping. Prime 1 seem to have used a sort of bendable plastic for these cool little additions, which seem to feature the world tree. Then we have this really cool leather looking red belt, which has a really intricate design sculpted into it, then the gold tip on the right leg, along with another gold medallion. Going further around the belt to the back of the statue, we've also got another gold medallion of sorts, with a different design. Continuing with the man's waist, Baldur features a few different types of animal furs, and I'm not sure, but this part looks like scales. Did this man skin a dragon? Then his empty pouch. Considering who we're talking about, I wouldn't be surprised. But the texturing of these long flowing parts of the clothing look absolutely amazing, really showing off the aging and weathering to an insane degree. And then above the belt, we continue with more wraps, but the paint and sculpting seems a little flatter here and not nearly as detailed as the rest. Wonder if the painter got tired after all the work on these other parts. Oh well. Now on to the extras. Thankfully, there's only one additional piece to this statue which comes with the EX version. That's the little stone logo for the 2018 God of War Omega emblem. Now I do have one complaint about this piece as it was advertised differently with little steps going up to it and with more snow features. And they seem to have cut that entirely making the part shorter and stand out a lot less. 
It's very disappointing. Either way, this awesome little piece sits in between the two characters when they're on full display, just to really bring a little extra to that diorama. This small piece uses the same sort of rugged, cracked stone design as the lower portions of the statue base, with the red blood smear Jormungandr logo displayed on the front and the runes etched in. Top also has that glistening snow as well as roots that wrap around the back and sides and the top of the stand. Now for the size of this oversized beast, the height of this statue comes into a total of 60 centimeters. Now the width of this statue comes to a whopping 65 centimeters wide as it's meant to be displayed side on. The depth itself comes to 55 centimeters. Don't worry though, because as many will already know, this statue is meant to be displayed diagonally, facing the newest enemy and overpowered rival. Okay, so you can assume from the fact that this is a really large statue, this is gonna be one pricey bitch. And you'd be absolutely correct. This statue comes in a whopping total of $1,199, not including shipping, which I'll be honest, was a little nuts this time around. But regardless of the shipping, this statue is still an amazing piece and definitely worthy of praise. And with the added little logo at the bottom there, bringing the two pieces together is just going to be absolutely phenomenal and I cannot wait to have them paired side by side. But that pretty much wraps up this review. What did you think of this statue? If you have any questions, please drop a comment below. And if you like this video, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe for more statue reviews. But until the next one, thanks for watching and see you next time.